Welcome back, Horlings, to more Divine Divinity. The flashing that was occurring in the first video should be fixed. That was due to a bandy cam issue, so I just went ahead and switched to fraps. That's why I use multiple recording programs. One of the biggest questions I get from new people that are starting to LP is, what do you use? Well, I use Camastasia. I used to use Camtasia a lot, actually, for my DOS programs because I could resize the window pretty easily, drag and drop pretty easily to whatever I wanted. Then uh, Jack saw Jack introduced me to Bandicam, which is pretty nice because you just click one button and it auto adjusts to whatever the window size is. But uh, you know, honestly, every game has its has a recorder that it works well with or better with others. So I bounce between all three of them. I've been using probably Bandicam the most though. I always start off with that and if I have any issues I'll go to Fraps. Fraps the problem is is it doesn't there's no way to pause it easily like you can with Bandicam. Like you can stop playing, pause the camera and uh, just pick it right back up. With Fraps, as far as I know I have to end the video and then start another one and that forces me to use Sony Vegas to render all the material together. We're just kind of looking around here, un unveiling uh, some of the different things here in town. That's my quick save. We can play with the dragon statues here. We're not going to do that quite yet. We're looking for the well. Uh, we have to unfreeze Mardanius. And his door was locked in the last video, so we need to find another means around, which we were told the wooden well was the way. This dirty rat. Ow! Killed that rat! Empty experience. Now as you can see, this is kind of Diablo-ish. As far as how the combat works, it's not turn-based or anything. You just click and that's how you attack the monsters. That was a hard key to find. I can't use that. You can't... Huh? barrel with nothing in it. I haven't played this since it came out. So kind of doing this semi-blind. I'm probably gonna pull up a walkthrough to make sure I don't miss anything fancy, but right now I'm just kind of running around getting used to the, the GUI and the controls and the mechanics and all that again. Brilliant! You can see the key goes away once you use it on the door. That's always nice. There's one thing about the Ultima series that I always kind of like... I mean, it was cool having a bag full of keys, but... It turned into a clusterfuck. But the good thing is, as long as you had the right key, they didn't force you to look for it. Let's explore this whole dungeon area before we go up. Hitting the alt key shows you everything on the ground. We have some alcohol here, which Lug Lug will refuse to leave behind. Sorry, I can't use that. And always be mindful of the minimap up here. It's showing us neutral characters as green. Those are going to be rats. I mean, they're still worth 50 experience. That's a lot when you're level one. So, unfortunately, we got to clean it up down here. There's a barrel with an apple in it. God knows how long it's been down here, yet it's still fresh. There's a locked barrel and a pile of five gold pieces. 
and an emerald and a dead rat. I can't use that. Six gold and some bread. It was locked. Lockluck does not believe in locked barrels! That's pretty much it down here. I don't know if these rats keep respawning or what, but I can sit here and grind. Uh, I think there's a way. We don't want to do auto map. We want to. Yeah, I can't zoom anymore. Holy balls. Looks like we pretty much finished everything here, though. I don't see any other pathways. Let's go ahead and head up the ladder. Hold, um, do I know you? Ha, huh, what are you doing in my house? Now, you don't know me. I got it through those stinking ass cellars that smell of boiled cabbage. Vanilloy asked me to ask you to unfreeze him. You see, he's getting rather cold. Boiled cabbage? How oh, the taste of... You're not an agent of Theleron Hashnator, are you? I'll destroy you. Creature of darkness, where's that spell? No, no, no! Lanelor! You know your elephant friend, pointy ears. He needs your help. You've frozen him, you dumb old bastard. And now you would like to be unfrozen. What's that smell? What? Lan Lanalaw? Where, where is Lanalaw? Speak up, stranger. I'll have you know that I control mighty magic and can kill with but a word. Is that boiled cabbage I smell? He's just outside. Please, calm down a bit. Stupid old fuck. I'm not gonna dick smack you in the face. Thank you, stranger. I thought I was never going to get out of that prison. Uh, my feet are still numb. Seven gods, my toes have gone blue. Let me rub them. Ah, it hurts. The blood is returning. Hey, that's better now. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, my benefactor. Are you all right? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm already feeling better. We elves recuperate fast, you know. The first thing to do now is find a way to help Mardanius. The man is raving. Only a matter of time before he starts hurling destruction spells at shadows or passes by. Look what he did to me, if you don't believe that he's capable of in this state. What is wrong with Mardanius? He's like a senile Alzheimer having Alzheimer son of a bitch. I'm not sure. He started behaving like a madman several days ago. Since then, it's only been getting worse. Some of the healers here believe he's possessed by some demon I simply don't know. A demon, you say? I. It's not far fetched as it sounds. It's only been recently that some healers have ceased to believe in demons, but intellectual fashions aside, Hellspawn do exist. Fortunately, they are also very rare in this world. Mardanius is constantly muttering mysterious things, and his personality has changed dramatically. Those are the typical signs of demonic possession. Galat Fingil! Is there something that can be done to save Mardanius? Well, if the demon theory holds water, the catacombs beneath Elaroth might provide a clue. They'd be most likely a source. Places of dead are spiritually closer to the non-corporeal realms, such as hell. What are the catacombs that you mentioned? Only a few people hereabouts know it, but there's a huge cavern system running beneath our feet in Elora. Some of it is an ancient dwarf working, but most of it's natural. Several years ago, Mardanius went and explored down there, alone. When he came back, he sealed the entrance and warned us not to go down there ourselves. He wouldn't tell us about what he found in those pits, but whatever it was, it scared him. He once mentioned old catacombs and evil spirits to me, but he would say no more. How do I get into the catacombs? I've only discovered that recently. 
During one of his chances, Mardanius mumbled something about the catacombs and facing all the dragons to the north. Other than that, I'm afraid I have no idea. What can you tell me about Alroth? Mardanius founded the Gila community of Alroth. His goal was to unite healers of all races, though they might further our skills with mutual studies. Can you heal me? 150 gold? Go fuck yourself! Bye bye! So, dragons. Almost face to the north. Kind of get a satisfying click there. <laughs> Holy shit! Wait, my human friend, I have something for you. What is it? I've searched through the belongings in my house and I've found this artifact. It might help you in your quest. I would like to give it to you as a token of my gratitude for all you've done. This looks like a little pyramid. What does it do? This pyramid is surrounded by a strong magical field. There exists an exact duplicate of this pyramid artifact somewhere else in the Revelium. If you operate this pyramid correctly, it will teleport you to the duplicate. You mean if I use this, I'll be shot across the land like a squeezed grape pit? Yes, in a way. But you'll come no harm. Think of it as traveling across many leagues in a single step. The pyramid will come handy if you have a need to get well away from a dangerous situation in a hurry. The pyramids are also the perfect way to travel over long distances. So where's the other pyramid now? Ah, uh, well, to be honest, I've never dared to try it myself. Theofingo. The duplicate can be, it could be anywhere, so be careful the first time you use it. You mean, for all you know, I might find myself surrounded by orcs? Or at the bottom of the river? I'm afraid so, but who knows? If you don't want to risk finding the other pyramid the magical way, you might still find it during your travels. If you do, it will become invaluable to you. It's a strange gift, but a princely one, nonetheless. I thank you. Lug Lug is learning a ticket. Looks like we've leveled up. I got the skills to pay the bills! Elven Sight. We want to be good with... I don't know. What should we do with Lug Lug? Go axes? Hammers? Path of the Warrior God. Enchant weapon. That's going to be useful to do. Repairs, obviously... Putting one uh, point into repair is going to be useful. I just have to decide if I want to go axes or... I mean, it's fucking lug lug. The problem is, I know for a fact, swords are going to be the most... I eh, will hang on to it. I'll do some research. Stamina. We want to take a point into alchemy for sure. I might do that now. I think I can start picking up. Uh, making our own potions, things like that becomes important. The thing about this game is a fighter can cast magic, a thief can cast magic, a mage can become a bit of a warrior. You can kind of intermingle all the different abilities. So, we got lockpick, identify, I need to look in to see what I need here. And figure it out. Here we are in the catacombs. Uh, 
our new Dirk is still the best weapon we have. Durability is down to 7 and 12, though. The ancient catacombs were abandoned a long time ago, and even I... Mardanius, don't dare to enter them any longer. I ordered my disciples to seal the place, because I sensed alarming emanations of evil coming from down there. Not have returned from the catacombs to report what manner of peril, but I sensed it as some entity powerful in magic. I wrote to Duke Farrow at Stormfist Ta Castle and asked him to dispatch some troops to Alara so that the Kyle army might take care of the problem. Fortunately, Duke Farrell has so far ignored my request. This book shall stand as a warning to any traveler who enters this place. Turn back while you can. I've already lost half a dozen men trying to explore this pit of evil. Let their sacrifice be enough and God succor their spirits. Signed, Mordanius. You like that voice change on the fly, bitch. That's how the game order rolls. Lug, lug, not leave catacombs. We gotta lock the door. Or something somewhere here. There it is. What the hell did that just do? Well, probably open this door, big guy. It's kind of scary down here. I wonder what that did. Too bad I couldn't record my own voices for uh, Lug Lug. Can't take the torch, can only light it. You got fucked up! Ah. Get you some! accused of treachery was tortured under the orders of Thelron. The man refused to admit his guilt and thus Thelron ordered the burning out of his right eye with a hot iron. His teeth were removed one by one and his right hand severed. After at last admitting his treachery, the torturer was permitted to end Roland's suffering by immersing him in boiling tar. Evidence was later found that Roland's confession was in fact false and that he had been quite guiltless. Thelron declared that any servant who could so lie to his beloved master even under torture deserved Roland's fate. and oranges! Game Order should do another healthy cooking channel. 
or video at least. You know that's what the subscribers want. You can see the red up here, showing us that there is evil near. Avoid getting gangbanged. Ah. Or not. <clears throat> Potions. Minor healing. Almost healed us to fool. We'll take it. Magic orb, uh oh. My magic orb. <clears throat> Don't give me minor magic shit. In healing. Augment damaged. Through magical methods, you temporarily gain the insight and knowledge of Master Warriors and do more damage to your opponents. If it's passive, how is it temporary? Luckily, our dagger is holding out quite well. Sapphire key. Our kills are starting to build up here. Gives us statistics. It's either height, sight, and hearing, armor, hit points, the min and the max. I love the level two warrior. Yeah, 
we're about to hit level three. Fucking magic. Ah. <clears throat> I'm gonna need to find some healing potions here soon. The locked door we saw earlier. That's where the sapphire key was used. stuff. Yes. That was a mean skeleton. traps. I believe those are for the thieves to use. Alright, so every time I level I put one point in strength, one point in agility, and one point in constitution, and then I divvy the rest out. I usually will probably, for now, do strength and constitution. That's the two most important ones for Lug Lug. Giving it hit points and damage power. Sometimes I'll just flop two into strength just to make him a, a badass. There's a book with some kind of insignia. Written in runic. And this basically is showing us that we can summon skeletons with the summoning circle. Military essay. Fighting against fully armored knights. A fully armored knight is a deadly opponent. The knight's armor consists of protective pads with long metal plates protecting his arms and legs. Most knights wear a helmet to cover most parts of their faces. The preferred weapons are a sword, battle axe, and a lance and a shield. If you battle the knight in full armor, you must use the knight's armor against him, for they are heavy and cumbersome. Slow. The knight down, so speed and mobility are your advantage. This door is locked tighter than a dwarf's ale purse. Dwarf's anal, anal gland, what? So we gotta find that key. It's not under there. Some more gold. Need to look elsewhere.
Glug Glug run fast! <laughs> I'm hesitant to put uh, any points into axe and hammers simply because right now we're using basically a sword weapon. I need to find out what the average endgame skill points are so I can kind of figure what's going to work best for our guy. I do love being a bit of a min-maxer just because it makes sense if you're trying to conquer the shit out of the game. Of course we are! Like we conquer barrels! Barrels are bitches! Get moving in this game. Try somebody another skeleton. Maybe it'll provide us with a key. Or not. Lover! Hmm, I wonder what that did. Me too. Ah! What the fuck? What an ass! Alright, I don't speak orcish, but there's a band of merry orcs here. We look for axe, magic axe, slasher, Olai! Ola human, you come. Smirok want talk with you. No need to draw weapons. What's your name, Orc? You deaf or dumb? Me Smirok, me powerful leader of this clan. What do you want, Orc? Me and friends seek magic axe, understand? It's called Slasher. We not find Slasher. We want Slasher. You help? Help, Orc? I'll see if I can find this axe for you. And then put it in your skull. You go look. Me and friends wait. I'm pretty sure if I find this axe, I'm going to keep it. You drop something. <coughs> the monsters will open doors and go through them. That's what we heard. Ah, this guy came through the gate to fight me. <coughs> luck, luck, fuck you guys up. Bones and bones and more bones, bones, bones and bones all around my bones.
Poor as shit. Lug lug like big women. This appears to be a partial diary of one Gregor Brock. A former soldier who took up the professional bodyguard for hire. The book is old and badly damaged. Some of the entries speak of a woman called Savenna, and how his lack of courage failed him when the bandits on the road to Verdistus attacked them and he fled. Sylvana lies mortally wounded, and because of my cowardice, the bandits took her money and just ran her through with a sword and left her to die. I returned to her seemingly lifeless body. She still clung to life, but only by a mere thread. She sensed my approach and held out her hand to me. I rushed forward in an attempt to comfort her, but as I came close, she grabbed me by the hair with her last strength and uttered this terrible curse. You left me at the mercy of those thieves, Gregor. You failed in your duty to protect me. For that I curse you. I bind you with my dying breath to my statue. You shall stand vigilance over it even after your death. Your only release shall come when you find another to protect and show them the courage and sacrifice that failed you this day. The rest of the book is damaged, but there is one last legible entry. Since her death, I have been drawn to her statue every day. Now my life draws to a close, and I write this knowing it will be my last entry. I feel that even death will not release me from my obligation. I pray that another arrives so that I may redeem myself and embrace peace and oblivion. Forgive me, Selvina. I should probably save me before I light this candle! Appear, my guardian. Appear. You failed me once, but you shall fail me no more. Uh -oh. My guardian, my untrustworthy protector, will you fail me again? Will you run away and take cover when your lady is in danger? Do you want to prolong your well-deserved curse of never coming to your final rest? No. Never. Swear, you will do everything in your power to protect your protege this time. Never to run away in the sight of danger and give your life at last. Only then will you find your rest. Me... Swear... Now you have a protector hero. My former servant will fight by your side as long as you are not leaving these catacombs. Nice to know! Alright. We got a zombie follower. How fucking badass is that? This game just went from a 10 to a 20. Alright folks, that wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for more Divine Divinity soon to come.